after the null, um, just going to go through fitting the taller screen on the PCX. Um, I'm trying to figure out some alternative lighting as well. You may have noticed in the last video where I was doing the review of the small screen, there was a lot of flickering kind of sensation on the screen. It's because my uh, ceiling strip lights in this workshop are LED. And I think it's just the camera picking up on it. You can't actually see that. It's not like that, obviously, with the naked eye. But I've noticed it's the same on a few other channels that do things like that. Um, so what we're going to do with this one is going to get this one installed. This one has fitting kit. This is a D1190 kit. Um, obviously, because the size of the screen, the four wee screws on the standard one that you can see me fitting here on the screen. So you can see these wee screw holes here and here. There is no way that's going to support the height and the weight of the screen with the wind force on it. So you're going to have these extension brackets like spreading the load a bit more. So we're going to crack open the kit and see what's inside it. And then we can kind of take it for there. Don't know why I've suddenly decided to use this wee craft knifey thing. But, uh, I, oh no, I do. I can't find my Stanley. I don't know what I've done with my Stanley. There we go. And I thought it'd be neater than just ripping it open with my bare hands, you know what I mean? Hey, there we are. So here's what we get in the kit. So we've got some new fixings, some new rubber bushings. Looks like some metal washers and some little screw caps and stuff, which is cool. And we've got these brackets. So to my initial, before I've even looked at this, it looks to me like this is going to go on in place of probably one of the top bolts here and extend up to support the screen. Okay, put sharp pang away before I slash myself stupid. Well, I'm not very good with these things, um, as you've been able to tell. Right, so we'll look at the instructions then and we'll see if I'm right, just through my kind of gut instinct there. Um, now, obviously, I'm just violating the man code here reading the instructions, but needs must. So, we're going to need a 4 and a 5 mil Allen, a 10 mil spanner, a 10 mil socket, and a posy. Or a cross-headed screwdriver, so into the toolbox we go. And now four and five mounts. So there we go. So there's our tools. That's what we're going to use to install. And here's our actual instructions. So first things first, we are going to pop the V off. Ah, I'm wrong. Ah, interesting, right? So these actually go into the dashboard behind here where the um, kind of behind the clocks to support the screen. Oh, that's cool because I thought it was just going to be big muckle brackets but that'll probably look a lot better. So we're going to take that off. We're then going to screw the screen on as normal and put that back on and then we're going to do with these rear mounts. This should be nice and simple guys. Don't imagine there being much an issue with this. So um, if you bear with me two seconds I'll reposition and we'll get cracking. Okay, we update. Um, what I've done is I've stopped installing the taller screen right now. I'm just going to do a return on eBay for the screen. And I'll wait until... Uh, well, I need to go and take my kids to the party, but that's another story. Um, I will wait on the installation until 
Uh, I hopefully hear back from MP as to what they want to do because if I'm going to have to, well, I'll wait till I hear back from MMP as to what they want to do. I've asked them just to replace the screen, but the screen in the fit and kit came as one. I don't know if it's like a pre-packaged thing or something for them. Um, I've not dealt with MMP like that for a long time, so I can tell you what they're like. Uh, so, update you shortly on that one, and we'll do like a part two and finish fitting the thing off. Uh, right, cool. Catch you next time. Okay, so I've done my return for this broken bit here to M and P. Um, we'll see what they say, but I need a screen anyway for going to work and stuff like that. Keep the weather off me a bit. So I'm going to just install these grommets through these holes in the windscreen, and this is where the support bolt onto. So obviously these will be. To stop you kind of tightening stuff straight onto the screen etc and just cracking the screen because it will not take that kind of pressure it's just acrylic uh, couple of pushes and pulls there we go right so that's them on now according to the instructions I have to put these two feet in here. So we have these two. And I'll show you how they're installed in a wee bit. Oh, they're just kind of resting on it. I thought they screwed. I, I was worried they were going to like screw into the dash or something, but they don't seem to. They seem to just kind of brace it almost against the dash. Yeah. There we go, no much to that at all. That's fairly straightforward. So we're just going to put them in place and then all we're going to do is we're going to bolt specific order of doing it through here. So I've already got my chromatic bit in. So the best I can understand for the GV instructions, which are a bit worse than IKEA to be perfectly honest, is we've got the bolt through the, the bit here. Just going to lift this a little bit, push this through, come on man, there we go, should be a straight shot, surely, don't call me surely, Okay, so a unique little issue is that the powder coat bit of look of it on these brackets is so thick the bolt doesn't fit, which is fun. That's interesting. It's always good to see new shit happen. New and interesting ways to cock things up. I'm rapidly getting quite unimpressed with us. Does not seem to be a very good quality bit of kit between the breakage and this. I mean, don't get me wrong, the powder coat, I mean, it's, it's plastic, it's dripping on it, but it's, like, <sighs> proper having to force that through there. Shouldn't it be that thick, man? You're going to break the screen, putting that much pressure on it. So I'll just cut it through, almost like a tap. Let's see if that makes it any easier. It's a little bit easier if you just screw it through, admittedly. So let's see how this one goes. I'll leave that one there for now. Because I've got a washer missing, I need to put on the other side of this as well. So much for it being easy, eh? It's a pain in the arse. I think I'll just put it up with getting wet and use the wee one there often. And deal with this shape. Let's get the Allen key. Let's see if I can breach through a bit with a bit of leverage. 
obviously the rang one, choice of two things, you pick the rang one. So it goes. Typical. I can feel this coming through in the back, there we go, it's through now. Once I get this on I'll bring a camera around and I'll show you what it looks like for the dash side. Not massively impressed with this, I must say. Doesn't seem to be a very well designed or thought out bit of kit, to be perfectly honest. Ten mil spanner, another washer, and then we've got an eye lock on the back of that to go on. <clears throat> Cheating a bit with a ratchet spanner, but go to make your life easier when you can somehow, eh? As they say, if you've got it, flaunt it. I've got a ratchet spanner. <laughs> there you go. Um, right, so that's that one on. Not massively impressed with this, I have to say. Although it is, it does seem a lot more secure on the, the dash than I was expecting it to be. With there being no actual like screwing into the dashboard or anything for these mounts, I was expecting it to be a bit more wibbly. But it's okay, to be perfectly honest. Well, it seems to be anyway. I must say, man, I've had clearer instructions in IKEA, and that is saying something. I've also had better quality feeling fixtures in IKEA. These washers and that feel very cheap and very one shot only, you know what I mean? Quite contrast, really, to that mega thick powder coat. On the brackets, and somebody was talking to was it Mike Boy? Was saying in the comments about my phone mount. I'm going to do a wee thing about my phone mount shortly as well. Let you see how I'm doing it with my quad lock. Um, So what it's doing is instead of it actually, I'll show you in a wee sec, be easier if I take you off and show you. Right, so here we go, head out of the phone. Um, so this is what it looks like for this side. As you can see, bolt never run through there and the bracket's just holding on there. Absolutely nowhere in the instructions is it telling me that that has to be screwed in there. I'm just going to bring you back. Yeah. Absolutely nowhere to say anything about securing them to the dashboard, so I'm happy just to leave them like that. Obviously then you've no lasting damage. You go to sell the scooter or whatever. That's what it is. So I'm going to leave the GV stickers on it now. Um, we'll see how this goes. Because this one obviously might be going back. Now those of you, or maybe one or two of you noticed, <coughs> we had a boo-boo, I was working on a friend's bike, 
and it was a bit tight for storage and I parked in and I parked too close and I've got scratches my mudguard but thankfully had these lovely little stickers just arrived um, so that is working fine or as we call them in the trade plasters right um, that's going to be us to next time folks I'm going to show you the quad lock in that in the next one so catch you then bye